Hello and welcome to Club Talk Hurling for this uh, this week. Brought to you by Slattery Sullivan Insurances in Nina. Uh, if you want to get a new quote for motor, home, farm, commercial, whatever it is, give the reference uh, our game and you'll get 10% off all new business quotes. Michael Verney, how are you doing? You looking forward to the hurling this weekend? Yeah, some fairly juicy ties, Shane, when you, when you go down through it. Um, obviously, it's mad to think that Wexford are at the quarter final stage already, maybe when some other counties are really probably only really getting going. But... Uh, yeah, some really juicy ties to get stuck into. Loads of uh, loads of very very interesting subplots as ever at club level. There's always it's great that that everybody's eyes are on it because there's so many interest, interesting things going on and so many big duels, particularly between a lot of different uh, high profile county players. But yeah, big weekend ahead. Yeah, I think no better place to start than in Tipperary. The, there's a huge clash of two mid Tipperary teams between Lockmore, Castellani, and Thurles. That's going to be on in Sample Stadium. Noel McGrath and John McGrath against Poddy and Ronan Maher. So you're talking about the battle of the two premier brothers of the premier county. <laughs> you always love to start in Tipperary, even if, <laughs> even if it's not the be- even if it's not the best story with starter anyway. But in fairness to you, this this is uh, this is this is a brilliant one, really. Yeah, Lockmore, Lockmore had a relatively comfortable opening round win. Turles had had a big win against Killer One. Um, Kind of was probably maybe a 50 50 game beforehand with a bit of a statement from Turles. Obviously, haven't won it the last two years, and it must have hurt them a bit to see Boris and Lee going as far as they did when Turles haven't been able to get to that elusive All Ireland final. It's just one Munster, one Munster crown for basically all their dominance and tip in recent years. But yeah, really, really, really juicy tie here, in fairness. And be interesting to see. I, I often wonder, like, when. There's big high profile players coming up against you against each other. Do they pick each other up? Or you know, are are, are Lockmore trying to put a stopper on Paddy or they trying to put a stopper on Ronan? Or do you go with maybe Noel McGrath having much less influence on the game, but Mark and Paddy and keeping him to have less of an influence on the game? So it's a kind kind of a fine kind of balancing act for managers there, whether you really want your county player to shine and put them on one of their weaker players, or you really just go to stop the opposition's best player. Yeah, I mean, you can put Ronan Maher anywhere you like. I mean, we even saw him midfield for Tipperary a couple of years ago, and he's well able to score. If the man can score from 100 yards, no problem. But John McGrath has got that good hand, and he can play in the full forward line, and he is that threat. I'm not sure who you'd want on him other than Ronan Maher. So I think that matchup could happen. In a way, it probably limits the launch pad that Limerick, or sorry, that Tur- uh, Turles have from the half-back line. But you, you just can't leave John McGrath on his own. And if he gets good ball in, in front of him, uh, I think Ronan could be under a bit of pressure there, but like he has the versatility to play back there. Just on versatility, if you're talking about like four county players, you'll rarely find four lads with, with more versatility than these. Like Noel can play anywhere from eight to fifteen. I'd say John hasn't played out around midfield, but probably could can play in any position in the forward line. Ronan can play in any position in defence. Paddy hasn't really played cornerback or anything like that, but we know he can play fullback, we know he can play centre back, and we know he can play wing back. Um, so like not only are they unbelievable hurlers and brothers and there's so many things there, they're unbelievably versatile as well, which just means like they're a manager's dream really. You know, you can play them basically anywhere. Yeah, the the great thing for SARS was they were under pressure against Killer One and Killer One are, we keep talking about one of these teams that have the potential to win a county title. But after the water break, they won the remainder of the game. I think it was 1-8 to a point. So imagine what that will do for their belief. Like They've got target men up front. They still have Pa Burke. Everyone will remember him from his Tipperary days. He'll knock over freeze all day. Beautiful stakes man Is, as well. Was there ever a more kind of his rigid style? It's such a rigid kind of methodical fluid. style. I would have said fluid. I'd actually watch him hit freeze all day. I think he's a beautiful style. No, no, no. I mean, it's not rigid. It's just more... It's very kind of robotic. I thought that's the way I that's the way I would have summed them up. And everything was I don't know just the way he lined everything up. And I'm, all. I always, I'm I, gonna need comments in on that one. I take that as an insult. I almost take it to heart because I've always enjoyed watching him hit freeze so much. Get out of here with that nonsense. But uh, that aside, you've also and especially the weather's lovely now, even though we are getting the odd uh, flurry of rain. But if it goes, if the weather even turns a little bit, the fact that Turles have those target men like Billy McCarthy is back in, Dennis Maher's in there, Pa Burke underratedly is able to catch a high ball as well, and then you've got Lar to come in off the bench. They've got great options. No, they've got serious options as well. Not more wouldn't have that type of squad. This is kind of what I'm saying about about Noel and John and Brian McGrath as well. Like they need all three of those 
really, you know, to have eights out of tens to be winning this game. So whether they're going to try and, you know, stifle some of Turles' better players, i.e. the matters, or they're going to try and let them thrive in other positions, it'd be interesting to see. Because if those boys aren't on their game, I, I couldn't see that more winning unless those three boys are really, really on their game. Aidan McCormick could also be taking the freeze for Turles. I saw him hit plenty of them in Holy Cross the last day. I think Lockmore will fancy themselves here. They're never too far away, and obviously they've beaten Turles plenty of times over the years. Um, yeah, bit of a 50-50 game as far as I see this one. We'll move on to no, the next... Think, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, given the statement of intent from Turles, I don't think it's 50-50. I think, I think they're a little, they could be a half step ahead at the moment, and particularly, I'd say they're very hurt by the last couple of years, and as, as again, I think the, the Burris Lee thing, doing something that they thought they should have been doing and should have been contesting all Ireland finals I think they'll be fairly stung the fact that they don't have uh, lads coming back to them anyway tired after a county season is a big big plus to them as well they would have lots of lads uh, involved with tip not just the matters even though would have been involved before Mickey Cattle uh, Dennis Matter even before Lara as well that maybe would have been coming back um, not tired but wouldn't have been coming back unbelievably fresh to have them all for the whole of the summer um, and when you go down through the forward line, you mentioned Aidan McCormick, Dennis Matter, Billy McCarthy back fit, Mickey Cattle as well, Lar coming on. Uh, unfortunately, it'd be great if, if Redzer was one of those names and he was in the mix as well. But unfortunately, not anymore. But they're re- they're pretty they're pretty star laden now. In fairness, and I I would definitely be giving Turles the edge there. Yeah, and I wonder what toll the Gaelic football will take on Lockmore as well. Uh, moving on to the next game, Clonolty Ross Moore against Nina. So this is a repeat of the 2018 county final. So it's a pretty big game, and probably people outside of the county mightn't realise that. Uh, some obviously would, of course. Clonolty won that county final, of course, uh, but Nina have had the edge in their battles otherwise. Uh, Nina kind of did what they had to do against Holy Cross, but you wouldn't say they ever hit top gear. Whereas for Clonolty, they now have Timmy Hammersley back from suspension. He got a, I remember seeing him get a red card against Killer One last year out in mine. So that'll be a pretty tasty game. Definitely, yeah. I was at this uh, county final in 2018, and Nina were fancy coming into it, but they just haven't been able to, they haven't been able to get over the line of finals. Uh, I think Padjo Wheelitton was the, I think they've only won one county title, maybe two, but Padjo was definitely the last manager to lead them. Uh, 96, I think, is off the top of my head. It could be the last, the last time they won it. Um, They've struggled in finals, but they've always been very, very impressive up to that. I'd probably, I'd probably give them the edge here. Um, to that 2018 final and even coming into that final is probably the best Clonauti have produced in the last couple of years. I don't think they've been able to get up to that level since. Obviously, I have John O'Keefe and you know Dylan Cork is somebody there that I know you think quite a lot of with Tip, but uh, Nina, Nina as well. Their, their, their star power is massive too. Obviously, the, the Maloneys are still going strong. Uh, Jake Morris, uh, Paddy Murphy, yeah, you know they they've they've a serious they've a serious side as well. I like probably probably give them the edge here, even though they they maybe didn't get to open up or you didn't see as much as maybe you'd like it them in the first round because they they had a fairly comprehensive win and were probably always going to win that game. But uh, like Clanouty without Timmy Hammersley is not really Clanouty. Like I think he is thirteen or fourteen points in that in that county final win two years ago. I always think it's a bit mad. Um, when you get sent off at the end of the previous season and it carries forward into the next year you always wonder from a manager's point of view as well you're preparing for the first game and your challenge games beforehand you know do you leave him someone like him off he's obviously their tallies man and they have to learn to produce without him but I just think it's very very strange getting sent off in a match in October and you know missing a match start of July or the middle of July I always think that's a very kind of, very kind of strange one it's strange but I suppose you need a deterrent too um, just a quick rundown over some of the other games I think Killer One McDonald's will be fancy to beat McCarthy Burris Upper Church Drum Band against Tumi Vara I think that's going to be tasty enough that's in the same group as Burris Lee versus Burgess Burris Lee and Tumi Vara of course true so uh, I think Burris Lee will fancy winning that too to Upper Church I mean James Barry as far as I know isn't playing Hurling um, he's not involved anymore so that that's kind of a huge kind of thing to take out of your team um, moving on to the next uh, just, just on that Shane we played Upper Church um, probably every year for the last maybe three or four years in Borough and I've always been really really impressed with them I've always wondered maybe why they haven't kicked on in tip I suppose the competitiveness of the championship is, is probably one reason but that's a big big game for them because obviously only two are going to come out at four you'd imagine Burgess are under pressure 
Um, you'd imagine Boris would beat Burgess this weekend. So the winner of Upper Church and Toom, if there is a winner, would probably be the second team to come out of that group. So it's a massive, massive game. Ross Gray against Kildangan. Uh, that's going to be a tight enough game. Kildangan drew with J.K. Brackens in the first game. I'd say they'd be fairly stung by that, and they were lucky to get out of there with, with even a point. Um, I'd say they will fancy winning that. Drummond Inch turned it around late on against Ross Gray. I mean, keeping into Seamus Callanan is, is the trick there, and Brackens and Drum, they wouldn't be separated by too many miles. Um, Holy Cross. Brackens were brilliant. Back, Brackens were oh, brilliant were. against Kildangan as well, because that was really surprised. They were obviously Seamus Marine Cup winners last year, and you don't expect them to seamlessly fit into senior hurling straight away. So it'll be interesting to see if there's much of a bounce from that, or if they're able to produce again. Because Drum really, Drum really got it very, very hard against Ross Gray, and it was only really at the end that they pulled away, and not pulled away in any way, that they really looked like they were going to win, and only won by two points after. Yeah. So that's and Woodlock a big game isn't there. For, Woodlock, Woodlock um, I don't know if he's fully retired or if he's injured or whatever it is, but he's on the sideline at the moment anyway. Uh, I think he might be retired, but um, someone might comment in and confirm that. Holy Cross against Aero Ganacarty, so I think the challenge for Holy Cross is where do we put Cahill Barrett? Because he is such a talisman for them. I'd say sometimes they want him midfield, sometimes they want him centre back. Maybe you want to even throw him into the forward line because he's such a dynamic presence. So because he's you know, by far and away their biggest name. That's probably even even just difficult to figure out where do we put him. And I suppose if an opposition forward is on fire, you're thinking, well, let's send Cahill back there. So a bit of a firefighter. It's probably it's probably tough for him too. He's probably moved around from Billy to Jack. And we the are... bigger question and tip this weekend is what's the broadband going to be like in places like Clonaldi and Clock Jordan and Templemore? Because I, I... <laughs> There was a few problems in Dala and a few other places, but it'll be interesting to see what the quality of the streams is like this weekend. It's amazing. This is kind of just what we've come to know now. This is how we kind of watch GA action in the mid in the middle of the coronavirus. It's just streams are just massively, massively important now. We did, there was a couple of problems in Offaly last weekend. Uh, generally, generally went quite well, but in there are more remote kind of places is usually where the problems are. But. Uh, it's great to have it because uh, I don't know what people would be doing without it. Yeah, as far as I know, all the games um, from Tipperary are going to be streamed from Turles from now on, which obviously makes things an awful lot easier. That's been done over over a few years anyway. Um, we'll move on to the Kelly, Kilkenny Championship. So I, I think a lot of people would have seen Bally Hale draw with Tullerone on TV last week. That was a really good game, 218 to 121. So this weekend, Tullerone are playing against James Stevens. Uh, that's a Friday game. How do you see this one going? Uh, well, Tullerone were brilliant first time, first time out. Uh, as we said, the clash of the two All Ireland champions. The, you know, when you only just watch it again, there the Bally Hale, the coolness of the the Bally Hale goal to draw at the end, and everything everything about it was just yeah, just smacked of a team that knows how to get a result in fairness. But Tullerone were brilliant the same day. James Stevens probably not nearly as impressive against Dane's Ford, dominated most of the match. Interestingly, that was the first time I think that neither Owen Larkin or Jackie Terrell played for the village, I think since the goods of about 2001, since neither of them were, were on the pitch. Um, Owen Larkin has a bit of a back injury, I believe he's back in training at the moment. I think Jackie pulled up with a bit of a hamstring injury uh, playing for their juniors, so he, he won't be featuring this weekend by the looks of things. It's a, a very kind of new look uh, village side, a lot of these new faces were brought in under, under Cheddar Plunkett last year. I think Matt Root is probably about six or seven years older than any other player on the team, and he's a couple of months younger than me at, at 33. So that'll show you with the, the kind of youth that they're going with. Uh, Keen Kenny was centre back, um, who would have been involved last year. I believe uh, Dermot Cody is back involved as well. He had been and had been sent there to play centre back if Larkin wasn't fit, but I think he broke his thumb, obviously, Dermot, son of Brian. Um, but it's definitely a new look, a new look village side. Um, this is going to be tight enough, but I'd still, I'd still probably just be favouring uh, the village, even though Tullerone looked very strong the last day, but obviously young Tommy Walsh, uh, full back and Parik centre back, and Tommy up the other end, uh, older Tommy and Massey Keown centre forward, but I'd still probably just be favouring the village, I'd say. Yeah, that's that's a fairly good spine of a team now that you name it, and the midfield wasn't bad either, but for Tullerone to come up from intermediate and to win the intermediate All-Ireland, and then play last year's senior county finalists week on week, that is, that's pretty heavy going, like even the attrition rate, 
because you're going to get hit harder playing at senior level. Not that their players have never played at that level, but still in all, it can't be ignored. Like James Stevens, they beat Dainsford last week, so 19 points to 114. They dominated most of the match. They were up like 16 points to 8, took the foot off the gas. Red card then to Jack McGrath, and like Paddy Hogan got a, a goal late on. Now, they actually missed the chance to equalise the Dainsford but then uh, James Stevens got another score and sort of pulled away. But I'd be like you as well. I think James Stevens might just edge this one. But it's interesting what you're saying about their age profile because, like a couple of years ago, I'd have been looking at their team and thinking, geez, it's kind of an older team. But they seem to have turned that around quite quickly. We'll move on to the next game Dainsford against Bennett's Bridge. And the more I talk about, to people from Kilkenny about this game, it's, it's the opposite of Liverpool versus Everton, which is known as the friendly derby. This seems to be a nice bit of rancour between these two. They wouldn't like each other at all near neighbours. No, and the, the whole kind of parish rule thing in Kilkenny can be a fairly muddled as well. We were chatting somebody in, in the city. You obviously have, you have the borough, you have all Auckland's, and you have the village. And it do, it's nothing to do with where you're playing, where you're living or anything like that. You basically decide who you want to play for and... You know that's one of the reasons probably Owen Arkin has such a you know he, he wouldn't particularly uh, enamour himself to a lot of folk <laughs> definitely not. I remember saying to you last year you said it to me. Imagine if uh, the village had been playing all Auckland's in the in the county final. Some of the some of the stuff he came out with in his book like just about his absolute hatred for him. <laughs> but there's a, there's a fair there's a fair uh, bit of bitterness between Dane's Ford and Bennett's Bridge. Um, a lot of it would probably come back to the Hogan. So I remember chatting to. The, the legendary goalkeeper Noel Skeeton before the 2018 county final that the bridge lost to Shamrocks and he was talking about all the players that they had you know the Morrisseys and um, oh the big lad the big lad full forward I can't think of his name can't think of his name now for the bridge uh, oh um, for Car- Liam, Liam Blanchford Liam, Bl- Liam Blanchfield as well and he was going through all the players and all the great players that they have and he just said about not having Richie and Paddy Holden because I, I didn't really know the story but he, he just kind of a little brief little thing here was the bridge as, as strong as they are now they lost Richie and Paddy Hogan to neighbours Dainsford having played some underage hurling with the bridge the rumour goes I think it's more fact than rumour but the rumour goes the Hogan's house was marginally outside Venice Bridge and the brothers wrote a letter to the bishop to extend the boundary to include their home uh, but it wasn't carried out so they were ended up playing with Dainsford as a result uh, and you know like you might want to play with one club at one stage of your career when you're young, but once you're with the other club, you're fully in there. But there's probably plenty of bitterness uh, still between both clubs. People never forget that stuff. New people will come on the scene and new managers and new players will come on the scene. But there's our lads in those clubs that will never forget that and never let that bitterness die. Yeah, and I remember my father used to always joke with James Woodlock about trying to get him to play for Burris Lee when he was a young lad. But like, and that in some cases that kind of thing does happen, or a family will fall out with the club or the manager of a, of a, a team at an underage level, and all of a sudden, you know, all the kids would be taken off to a rival club up the road. Like these things happen. It it runs so deep. We'll uh, I I'd, like Bennett's Bridge a couple of years ago. I thought this was a team ready to kick on. I mean, you name some of the players they have there. Jason Clear is another one that they'd have. They have plenty of lads who've been in and around the county scene. And they give a good account of themselves in that county final against uh, Ballyhale that time. Dainsford's probably very reliant on, on Richie and Paddy Hogan and Paul Murphy, of course. But I'd say Bennett's Bridge will, will just about fancy themselves. But there was very little between Dainsford and James Stevens. Yeah, f- funny, like last year, Bennett's Bridge ended up in a bit of a kind of a relegation kind of quagmire last year, having been in the county final. But that can so easily happen. Uh, in Kilkenny given the competitiveness of it all when you have Shamrocks the village or Lachlan's like there's it's if you take your foot off at all or you're not on point you can end up down the other end having been at the top end but I definitely would be expecting uh, I'd be expecting the bridge to win here maybe with four or five in hand I'd say yeah oh, Lachlan Gales against Ballyhill Shamrocks that should be a tasty one so just to run through their results we just mentioned Bennett's Bridge they'd lost by four points to Lachlan Gales 118 to 114 and Ballyhale had that draw 218 to 121 against Tullerone. But even just on the face of it, before you even go into the names, O'Loughlin Gales against Ballyhale has a good ring to it. 
Uh, it does, yeah. Um, obviously, massive names involved in both. Ballyhale are probably going to take a bit of time to get motor. They would have been delighted in a way with a draw last weekend, just given that there's kind of a lot of new personnel. You know, Richie Reid playing centre back, there's new fellas in, the loss of Mick Fenley, the loss of Henry Shefflin, the loss of Adrian Mullen as well, uh, through injury. So I'd say they would have been happy enough last week. This this will be very, very tight. You'd, you'd probably nearly give the edge to all options, but like Ali Hale nearly ended up in a relegation final last year and instead of that they ended up winning the All Ireland final again. So I think um I think it could be a bit of a slow burner for them. they they'll they'll just need to get motoring when they need to get motoring, which is around that quarter final stage. We played um O'Loughlin Gales in a challenge match. Jeez, I think it was the first game you know, when you were after the lockdown, the first time you were allowed to play a match. I think that was it. So maybe you can't fully draw too many conclusions from that. But one thing one guy who stood out for me a mile above the rest was Robbie Buckley. I'm pretty sure that's his name. He was playing wing forward, he must have scored six from play. And the sort of lad you give him an inch at all and he put the ball over from 80 yards beautiful hurler and i asked a few people from kilkenny do you know is he a young lad or is he a big age or whatever but he's 25 and i'm surprised that he hasn't been seen in with kilkenny now maybe he doesn't have the physical stature for it now he wouldn't be a muscle bound freak or anything like that he wasn't a whippet either but he's a guy that's if you give him room if bally hale give him room he can get scores on the board then of course there's that spine to the team hugh lawler fullback uh, paddy deegan center back so uh, and Paddy Deegan isn't shy about going on a run with the ball from centre back or even looking to go on the overlap either. Now he is a he is a very good player. I think this would be a right good game. I think this one might yeah. even be on the stream. Um, so I yeah, think no, anyone... there's a couple of like that's they're probably the two marquee games. There's a couple of other very good very good games as well. Clara and Aaron's own tonight will be t- will be tight. Then you have Dixborough and Greg Valley Callan on Friday night. Mullinavat against the, the Roar in the Stieg as well on the on Friday also. So yeah, plenty of good games in Kilkenny as always. And as we saw last weekend, you won't get anything too simple in Kilkenny. No, you get nothing easy there, as we love to say. Uh, the Waterford Championship this weekend. So. The thing here is all but two of the eight quarter finalists are already known uh, for certain, with the exceptions being two teams from Group C, where Lismore, Four Mile Water, and Dungarvan, you know, where they're uh, contesting the last spot. So Dungarvan will play Lismore, and uh, Dungarvan have to win or they're out. A Lismore win or a draw puts them and Four Mile Water through. Lismore have a great score, um, a scoring record at the moment. But um, the other three games then will decide which teams finish top of the group. All those six clubs already in the last eight. Um, and then the likes of uh, Mount Zion against Roan Moore. That's a city derby. Peter Quealy's in charge of Roan Moore this year. But Dungarvan against Lismore. I mean, hard to keep down the Shanahan's, especially Morris. I mean, Dan is there in his 28th season. He's more of an impact sub. And no, no doubt he's still dangerous. But Morris seems to be the main man. Yeah, Dan is a uh, is a selector as well as as well as as well as been a player. So and managing I, I, I the Waterford uh, Camogies team. Yeah, uh, he's a coach. I think with the Waterford oh, ladies. Yeah, so the interesting to see, like you know, with ten or fifteen minutes to go, lads, we may bring me on. You know yeah. what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. not saying that he'd say that, but like, it's just an interesting kind of demographic. Is, you is know? he like you know the way you have the manager and he looks back at the bench? The worst thing you can do as a manager is look back at the bench and then not bring anyone. But does he look back oh, at the bench and have, really have a mirror there and he just sees himself and he's like? There's only one man for it. That is that is literally like lads will never forget that. So because subs are always watching, they're always watching. You know, is he going to bring me on? Is he going? You know, like who's he looking at or whatever? And if he if the manager turns around and then looks back and doesn't bring someone on, like you're as a sub, your head is going to explode. Like it's yeah. like Ash, I'm worthless here. No, no, I might as well not be here or whatever. But uh, interesting, we talked last week, um, last Monday about you know Morris and the two seventeen and fourteen threes and one three from play and all that. And you know, raising you know, you know, the attention of lean cattle or whatever, in order for Morris to keep himself, you know, in lean cattle's thoughts, this more really need to really need to get through here. I know that's not what he'll be thinking, and he won't be thinking about trying to get back in a wall for nothing like that. But in order to keep himself in the spotlight, they really need to, to either win or draw here. Uh, interesting from Doug Garvin's point of view, like when a team is putting when a lad is sc- scoring fourteen threes. Like you need, they need to be cutting them down to six or seven in order to have a chance of winning this game. They're not going to win a big high scoring affair where Morris puts in two thirteen or two fourteen or something like that. So it'll be interesting when we're chatting on Monday, uh, what exactly way Dungarvan went about that. It probably just, I probably just edged this more here, 
Um, and I just think it would be great to it'd be great to see if Morris could have another couple of big games and keep himself keep himself in the conversation anyway with Liam Cattle. Yeah, and Patrick Curran of course will have to shoot the light uh, with Don Garvin. Even for him, if he can have a good county championship, that'll you know send out a message to Liam Cattle also. And of course, people out there, let us know who you think will win this match or any thoughts on any of the games. Ballygunner against Passage. It's another one worth having a quick little conversation about. Um, so Ballygunner saw off Tallow to clinch a place in the quarterfinals. Passage, like I think they were the last team to beat Ballygunner in the championship, and that was the county final in two thousand and thirteen. It really is quite amazing that Ballygunner are on this run. Do you think teams are just, in most cases, beaten before they even go out and field against them? Uh, probably because it really looks like. Um any time, any games I've seen them anyway, particularly in Waterford County games, semi-finals or finals, it, they're as slick as a county team. Like, and you look at them on paper, and you're just thinking, how are we going to break these? How are we going to break these down? There's not really another team in Waterford that has the sort of raw materials that they have. There's not really no the the Mahonies, uh Stephen O'Keefe, Desi Hutchison. That's just to name a couple. Shane O'Sullivan and a few and a few more as well. It's very on paper they're by far the best team, but not only on paper are they the best team. I think they're the most organised team, or I think think they're the team that plays probably to a system that probably suits them best, and maybe that no other team would be able to play. So they're really, really well drilled and organised. And as you say, I think most teams probably are beaten before they go out. Funny, the more you look back at that 2013 county final. Uh, Noel Connors and, and his brother Tommy, brilliant performers that day. It looks like more and more of a freak the longer things go on. Like it just, they kind of just caught them on a day. And funnily enough, Bally Gunner have, have learned from that and haven't really allowed anything even close to that happen in recent years. They always had Dennis Allen arms into last year's county final. And um, yeah, they're going to be they're going to be very very hard beaten again this year. They're massive massively strong favourites against Passage. Mm. Interesting to see how Ozzy Gleeson goes this week for Mount Zion against Rowan Moore. Said as I said, managed by Peter Queeley. De La Salle also against Abbeyside. So those are the games in Waterford. Just a quick uh, nudge towards the Antrim hurling championship this weekend. A couple of the ones that stand out: Loch Giel against Cushendall and then Rossa against St John's. Dunlai are the champions, but. I think both Loch Giel and Cushendall will fancy getting in among it again. Ah, uh, definitely, without a doubt. Yeah, it's fun. that's a big marquee tie there. I know neither of them were county champions last year, but it's ma- it's massive, and, and and we're not just paying lip service to it. Like I've been up around, you know, up around, you know, North Antrim for some of those big championship games, and it's that's pr- it's a proper festival when those games are going on, and it's. I, I like it actually it's, it's the, there's the proper bitterness between them as well and it's because it's so tight knit and that they're playing each other so often it, uh, it lends itself to yeah I don't know the best type of bitterness I suppose there's so much on the line in those games and yet it's not like in other counties they're still able to come together uh, at county level and there's never any rifts or anything like that but yeah that it's fairly high season now when uh, when those two are meeting that'd be an interesting time yeah the Galway Hurling Championship this weekend Castlegar are going to play against Portumna so two former All-Ireland winning clubs but the big question is over Joe Canning because he got sent off in that game against Sarsfields and then the team collapsed afterwards there was only three points in it at that stage ten minutes to go they ended up losing by 16 if I remember correctly but there's talk that he might be available to play yeah, um, just chatting to a few people this morning, not an official or from any official sources yet, but it's looking like um, he's had his red card rescinded and that he will be able to play this weekend. Uh, the prospect of Portumna playing a championship match without him would just be disastrous. So if he is fit to play, that's probably a game turner. It, 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 without being smart, it, it turns that from being a seven or eight point win for Castle Gar, in my view, to being probably just in Portumna's favour or a 50-50 game so if his um, his presence is massive I uh, don't think Jack Canning is available he also got a red card about a minute after Joe got his but to the best of my knowledge his, his, he's not available and the general consensus seems to have been that his red card was warranted Do you think Ger Farrer of Castlegar can rival Joe Canning for a pair of hands? Ah, oh, yeah, he was uh, like he was the original line ball king, wasn't he? Yeah. He was the original one. Um, yeah, and remember, Joe tried to equal his record. Didn't it? Did Farrer play in four All Ireland minor finals, winning three, I think, and Joe played in three, 
and they were beaten in the for the hat trick by I think Paddy Matter actually done a fair job on them yeah. that day. But uh, yeah, two two players that were obviously kind of prodigies growing up, um, and you know delivered I suppose uh, to varying degrees at a county level. Farrer was in and around the scene, but we probably only really remember him from all five. But yeah, an absolute touch of class. Remember when the line ball was given two points as well? And he was putting them over for sport in the league that year. He was absolutely loving it couple of other games in Galway. I'll just round them up and you can have a comment there if you if you wish. Uh, St. Thomas is against Sarsfields. Oran Moore ag- Marie against Turlock Moore. Liam Mellows against Claren Bridge. Cap Tagle against Loch Grey. And Tommy Larkins against Tina Abbey Tanairi. Yeah, it'd probably be Oran Moore and Turlock would probably be the big one. Um, two big statements made by both of them, I'd say, in the first round. Turlock beating Mellows and uh, Oran Moore beating Claren Bridge by a pint. Uh, you'd have to favour you'd have to favour Turlock there though. Um Dottie Burke obviously was kicking football last weekend with, with Cara Finn, but uh I don't like he's he's an absolute mainstay for them in around the middle, be it six or eight, uh twenty four who was involved with Galway when they won the All Ireland and when they were beating the final the year after, he's heavily involved there as well and uh, I expect them to make uh make a big show for the county title this year but uh, that's probably one of the one of the bigger games L- lots of big games in Galway Galway is similar to Kilkenny where you know you've, you've eight or nine teams there's three or four maybe a bit further on than others but you've eight or nine teams there that are really really competitive and can beat someone on a given day mm. so we'll move on to the Wexford Senior Hurling Championship that's at the quarter final stage and all I'm thinking is all those clubs that are already knocked out and the seasons are done for, for so many club players after just a couple of weeks, they've got a break next speed to play off this championship. Yeah, it's it's mad, it's mad isn't it? Yeah, to, to, like we mentioned it earlier in the show, the fact that they're at the quarter-final stage, this game, that game is obviously on TV, Faith Harriers and, and Shell Maliers, and, and then there's other, there's other you know, club games that are going on that are not insignificant, but it could be, you know, a second round group game or something like that, mm. whereas they're gone full bore, full steam ahead. Um yeah, it, it's an interesting one. As I said, if you pick up a knock, you're in you're in big bother. You're gonna be you're gonna be missing probably the majority of your championship. But uh if you can keep it if you can keep your team and squad relatively fit, uh you have a great chance of winning. It'd be interesting to see there's a lot of hype obviously about Fayette Harriers. We were talking earlier on the year I think there was a couple of thousand at their first training session when Derek McGrath was involved um, obviously Lee Chin involved as well and there's kind of the box office team as was in, in Wexford at, at the moment and the pressure will be on against, against Shell Maneers Shells will be one of the big kind of not saying the Fate Harriers aren't a, a big dual club but Shells will be one of the probably biggest dual clubs uh, the likes of Simon Dunham will be playing fairly week on week and he won't be playing week on week at the moment actually because there's no Wexford football championship until after the hurling, which is probably a blessing for some of those dual clubs if they can keep them fit. But pressure is on, uh, probably Fayette Harriers this weekend. But that's uh, that's going to be a, that's going to be a tough tough game for them. I'd, I'd be interested to hear from people in Wexford who they think will mark Lee Chin in this game because he's going to like as we explained last week, he'll probably start off in his own half of the field and try and draw an extra man out of the Shelmaliers defence up the field, create space for those lovely young forwards up at the other end of the field. Actually, I, I had um, I had meant to find the name of some of those young players for Fate Harriers, and I actually have. I just have them here somewhere. I'll just call out a few of them. Yeah, so Richie Lawler, Kyle Scallon, John Shield, and Liam Casson, uh, who came on as a sub as well. So they have a lot of, of young players who are class. But I'd be interested to see, is it going to be Simon Donoghue who follows Lee Chin up the field? Simon Donoghue is a good player, but there's very few lads that can keep into Lee Chin. Not only is he like a superb athlete at club level, he's a superb athlete at inter-county level. So it's a tough job for an inter-county player to even keep with him, especially when he's moving from one half of the field to the other. And obviously that's causing pandemonium because the other team is moving their pieces around and probably have an extra player up the field crowding their own attack. They have more space in their own back line. Like, they create an awful conundrum for you to do faith. Simon Dunham is pro- is probably the obvious candidate though because if you're gonna if you want someone that's gonna be able to stick with him like he is very very he is quite sticky he's very very fit you'd see him flying up the field and flying up the other end of the field yeah. physically now whether he'd be able to match Chin physically is is another thing no but one can fact, and, and you're also no. playing the opposition's t- uh, game if you're taking Dunham out of your own game plan by telling him to do a man marking job you're actually playing the opposition's game. Yeah, you are to some extent, but if he's able to run with him and if he's able to stop him being an option, then you're kind of taking the other team's game plan, a lot of the other team's game plan away. But uh, 
be, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. I'd imagine he'd be the he'd be the most likely candidate if anyone else thinks there's somebody else that's it that's able to keep it poked into him. Um, by all by all means, drop us a line. But that's that's one of four interesting quarterfinals this weekend as well. Obviously, Outer back in the quarterfinals having not been not been around the knockout stages last year. Liam Dunn is over out they're playing St Anne's. Um, obviously, Liam McGovern, Dermot O'Keefe. Then you have Nevena against Ferns. That'll be tight again. A lot of kind of weight of expectation, I suppose, on Conor McDonald and on Cahill Dunbar. And then on the Friday, you have the Martins, the reigning champions, John Myler over them against Glen Barrentown as well. Um, like Martins are obviously the favourites, but like you, you could probably see, you could probably see in any of the four games either of the sides winning. You could make an argument for either of the sides winning. Um, not too many. Martins is probably the one that's most clear cut, but it wouldn't be a massive, massive shock if, if Glen were to beat them either. While we're talking about Wexford, there's a sort of a Wexford-ish flavour to the Clare Championship this weekend when Six Mile Bridge with Davy Fitzgerald involved are against uh, Brendan Bugler's Whitegate. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? And you have Saoirse Bolfin involved as coach. He's obviously the Wexford coach, along with Brendan Bugler, and he's coach with Six Mile Bridge as well. Fairness now, the bridge will be roaring hot favourites for this. Obviously, won their opening game despite having 14 men for, I think, over over half of it. Um, Whitegate were beaten, in, were, were beaten in their opening game, as far as I can remember. So, Bugler will definitely be up against it here. Um, You'd imagine, you'd imagine the bridge will make a fair go at going back to back again. Obviously, no Niall Gilligan this year. Well, at the moment anyway, there's no no Niall Gilligan. He retired last year, but uh, would be a bit surprising. Someone like that, who, you know, has given so much to the GA and who loves hurling so much, you'd be surprised. I'd say he was champing at the bit during lockdown to get mm. back hurling, and I'd, I'd be interested to know from uh, anybody down in Clare or anyone from the bridge whether he's still playing a bit of junior or intermediate or whether he's totally retired from the scene because I'd say there are a lot of guys that had maybe retired or thought retired and then made a bit of a U-turn uh, when all this madness happened over the last couple of months yeah you can imagine the old oh no you come on come back you're only hurling for three or four weeks that's all you have to do three or four weeks and you're done and then sure it's very hard to say no to that sort of thing uh, there's a yeah. full round of games in Clare round two Ina Kilnamona against Newmarket and Fergus Ballier against Clooney Quinn who with Peter Duggan doesn't seem to be playing uh, Cratlow against Aero Guinness, Wolf Tones against Kilmaley, Fecal against Clare Castle, Clonara against Broadford, and O'Callaghan Mills against Crosheen. So plenty of games going on there. Dublin Championship is on this weekend. I'm going to be talking out for the senior bees, so you won't see me uh, sitting on the bench this weekend as a, as I've done a nice bit in the last little while. Um, what would be the pick of the games in Dublin for you? I was going to ask you about Kula, but I expect all I get was. I ain't saying nothing. You can't not know me. <laughs> but I've actually, um, I've actually played the two senior B games that are on at the exact same time as the senior A. So I mean, obviously I know all about our players, but I haven't really seen the opposition because I'm playing at the exact same time. Bit of a disaster having games at the exact same time. But I think for for clubs that have a big pick and good depth, they want to make sure that right, you're not just showing up to the senior A game and having all the guys who are on the B team on the bench and picking and choosing them as you need and having a really deep panel and then using them all in the B game if it's on the following day. I think it's trying to stop the, the teams with the bigger pick being able to run rough shot over the smaller clubs. Right, um, from my point of view, if I if I was you know, if I was playing for the Burr Intermediates and the Burr Seniors were playing, I'd be going mad that I couldn't watch the Burr Seniors playing. If, even if I wasn't oh, playing I'll, for you know what I mean? Like that's that's more what the argument I was making. Oh it's very but, annoying. Like I mean don't get me wrong I, I'm, I'm still part of the senior pa- A panel but and I would like to be talking out and all that kind of stu- uh, thing but I'm just kind of explaining why that is the situation more so than sort of yeah. saying that it's the right thing I mean for the smaller clubs I think it does make sense yeah it absolutely does but for me being part of the senior A panel and not being able to even watch the team or talk out with them yeah that's frustrating yeah. Just on that, like I'd say, your game against Nafina this weekend is probably one of the the more juicier ties. Nafina obviously hammered Satanta and Thomas Davis in the first couple of games. Doesn't look like Joey Boland and Tomas Brady, who obviously would have been mainstays with the Dublin hurlers there for a good while. Doesn't look like they're in action this year, but they still have like so Shane Barrett, uh, Sean Curry, and Connor McHugh's an interesting one as well. Obviously, we've probably seen him, you know, nearly ready just to make the breakthrough with the footballers, but he's juggling both along with a lot of other players um, including Con and a, Con and a few more and Conan Keeney as well 
but they're playing like there's an awful lot of traffic on bodies I know last weekend was free from fixtures but like say there was a lot of games last night on so, Wednesday yeah yeah, last night, Wednesday, and they're going to be playing again either Saturday or Sunday. Like, championship games in that short space of time, it's an absolute recipe for disaster. Just too much, too much overuse on the on various body, various body parts, particularly soft tissue injuries. And you're seeing hamstring knock that basically mean you missed the whole championship. Uh, Cole Keeney's an interesting one. Uh, my colleague in the Independent, Frank Roach, had a piece with Anthony Raymond but just a quick little piece talking about Keeney and a Pharisee he's, it's unbelievable what he's doing turns 38 in September and he's playing basically you know twice a week he's tra- talking out with the hurlers and the footballers and uh, just a quote from Rainbow he said he played, against, played hurling against Crokes he's out again on Wednesday this was a week or two ago he's in incredible shape only for him we were in trouble in the first 15 minutes he was incredible absolutely incredible just to be able to keep doing that despite um despite age and despite you know obvious fatigue that you would surely have but there's going to be a lot of a lot of traffic on a lot of players bodies over the next couple of weeks just with the nature of those championships overlapping uh Khan, i think was rested from the cool of footballers uh they played on wednesday night i think and he or he no sorry he didn't play he didn't play uh, the second round for the hurlers yeah against so the you, Tantra, have to, yeah. you have to be yeah you have to be clever about you know like just say like Kula would have been confident of beating Satanta and Thomas Davis so there's no point in really playing him for both of those games so you kind of have to be clever about what time you're putting into guys' bodies just to make sure that they're ready when you really need them mm. So just to run through all the fixtures there St Vincent's are against Luke and Sarsfields Plunkett's are against Ballantyr Ballyboden against Crave Kieran and Crave Kieran had like a couple of big wins in the last year or so I mean they, they battered Vincent's last year that would be a near rivalry so they'll obviously fancy upsetting anyone. Kilmacud against Scully Connell. Kilmacud should probably will probably win that well after battering Bally Bally Bowden there last a uh, couple of weeks ago. Satanta against Thomas Davis, uh, Nafina against Kula, and then on Sunday St. Bridget's against Foggs and Whitehall, Colum Kill against St. Jude's. So I think we have the we have the most of it done, have we? Uh, we have neglected to talk about Limerick and the big game in Limerick will be Dune and Patrick's well on Saturday. How did we and skip Limerick? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but you're you're leading it, so you skipped it. It's not me. Oh, you're <laughs> I blame game starts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, doing a Patrick Bell is a is a massive one. Uh, Doom drew at a dare last week. It was, I think it was last week. A massive score, one nineteen to twenty two, and I think they were level on, on ten occasions. Uh, Adair obviously have uh, Declan Hannon up in the forward line, and I believe he's going very well. And Patrick Well only kind of came with a late first to beat Adair in their opening round match. I think it was the very first weekend the game started back about mid July. So this is this is going to be tight. We played Dune in a practice game a couple of weeks ago. Uh, good side used the ball very well. Obviously. Uh, Barry Murphy, Pat Ryan, Darrow Dunvin was centre back and was kind of the real orchestrator there. Richie English is a massive loss. He did a crucial against Cork, uh, Galway in the league, I think, earlier on this year. And he's a massive, massive loss for them. Is that um, why Darrow Dunvin is centre back? Because Richie English, like he would have been there when I watched him in the last couple of years, Richie English always would have been wearing six. Uh, I don't know if it was six. He definitely played full back, Mark and Aaron Galan, in a championship match in 2019 but he could have alternated between three and six but when you when you take you know your full back away you probably need to make sure your centre back is even stronger if you know what I mean and Darrow Dunham was probably moved from, from midfield to play there um, but it's a massive massive game the, the well obviously Aaron Galan is flying for the well uh, they obviously have Keane Lynch Darren Burns as well Jason Galan Aaron Galan's brother uh, there won't be there won't be much in this there definitely yeah. won't be much in this and it's probably one of the better games of the weekend I'd say well if you put it this way Barry Murphy Pat Ryan and Darrow O'Donovan are guys who in the last couple of years would have been now Darrow O'Donovan played 2017 and 18 uh, but they would have generally been more so on the bench in the fringes whereas Dermot Burns Aaron Galan and Keen Lynch are all central to the success that Limerick had so just if you're going on marquee players alone you'd have to give Patrick Swell the edge there under Kieran Carey uh, just a quick run down over the other games that are on. Monaline against Moreau Boher on Sunday. Ahan against Kilmalak. Kilmalak looking really good against Napier a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Graham Mulcahy was on fire. Graham um, Gavin O'Mahony just looked like a really good team. And then Bally Brown are against Gary Splann on Friday night. Now, have I forgotten anything else or is the blame game over? No, I think, I think we're fairly safe there. Uh, 
We go through the cork ends. Yeah, we probably should, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Seeing as we're seeing as we're going through it and we're doing a bit of a preview, we might as well mention one of the traditional just, counties. Just, just briefly, no marquee games this weekend in Cork. On unlike maybe last weekend, uh, on Friday night you have Bally, Bally Hay against Middleton. Um Saturday then you have Carrick Tool against Glen Rovers, you'd imagine Glen Rovers would be roaring half favourites there. Aaron Zone against Bishopstown also that day. Sarsfields against Douglas. That's probably the most interesting one I'd say. Yeah. Sarsfields obviously not champions the last couple of years. But fairly, you know, full of, full of stars really as well against Douglas, who are obviously going to have the Cadigans. Maybe Douglas, the fact that they're juggling two codes and they're in around, you know, quarter finals, semi finals in both codes. Maybe they're kind of robbing Peter to pay, to pay fall, but yeah. they should have enough. They should have enough talent to be in the equation. Definitely further in the equation in in the Cork hurling championship. Yeah, than like they Shane have Kingston, Brian Turnbull, like they've no end of talent. Yeah, you'd imagine. You'd imagine like they're going to make a bit of a push, and again, it's different. It's different maybe this year while they are juggling football. At least they're not getting a load of tired bodies in after uh, an intercounty season or like that. They're getting the Cadigans when they're fresh. They're getting Kingston all these boys when they're fresh, and they can manage them and look after them. So that's probably the tie of the weekend. Just on Sunday then as well, you have uh, Newtown Chandler against Black Rock and the Bars against the Pearson. The Bars trying to bounce back after a pretty disastrous result against against the Glen last weekend, but. Uh, yeah, loads of really good games to get the, the teeth stuck into over the weekend. And thanks be to God for the club at the moment, because I know that the, the viewing figures are, are pretty good for all the matches. There's a massive appetite there. Like, if you look at the, the, the viewing figures between RTE and TG4's live games and all the people that are watching all these streams, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of people keeping in tune with what's going on in the club championships at the moment. Yeah. G- Ireland is GAA country. Right, that's it for Club Talk Hurling, brought to you by Slattery Sullivan Insurances in Nina. Uh, call them on 067 56705 and use the reference our game if you, for all new business quotes and you'll get 10% off. Thanks very much, Michael. Cheers, Chef.